Right, I want to refer back to a video which I did last year, which uh, basically, I've got a screenshot here from, uh, if you can see on the screen. Um, this is where I took a quarter wave vertical for 40 meters and uh, tried to use an air conditioning coil here to load it up for 80 meters. And um, someone saw that video and uh, I had a conversation with someone and they said, uh, James, you're, you're standing a bit close to that antenna whilst transmitting. Which, that's an interesting point actually, because at the moment there's a consultation going on with Ofcom. For, for those of you abroad, um, and I have more American viewers than British viewers, interestingly, um, Ofcom is basically our equivalent of your FCC, so all, uh, all licensing goes through uh, Ofcom for radio communications. But... Um, it's an interesting point because I'm stood or crouched down quite close to that antenna, probably no more than about maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a metre away maximum, maybe a tiny bit less. So this person uh, made the point that they thought I'm, I was a bit close and uh, you know, was that basically radiating myself with the antenna, which, okay, that's an interesting point. So let's look at this. Um, there's, because how many of us actually know how close we can get to an antenna? Um, I think most of us could probably eyeball it and say, yes, that's a good idea or no, that's not, not such a good idea. But how many of us actually know what the, uh, safe distance actually is to get to a transmitting antenna? Now, the information on this on the internet is a little bit scarce and what there is is frankly bewildering there's pages and pages of it and uh, goes into all sorts of uh, calculations and to be honest a lot of it whoosh straight over my head so let's simplify this as much as we can for especially as we've got a lot of uh, newly licensed m7s coming in let's make this as simple as possible so i want to refer you to uh, I'll put all the links for these documents in the uh, in the description. But this is taken from the FCC site, and it's the best guidance I could find so far um, as to what a safe distance would be considered to be. Now you got you can see this is uh, you got sixty five pages of this, and it goes into all sorts of calculations, loads of tables for everything. You've got a calculation for a tri-band Yagi there. I'm just going to simplify this and look at what most of us are going to uh, be working with at least earlier on in uh, in our radio um, careers. So this is uh, table six here is for omnidirectional HF quarter wave or ground plane antenna estimated at 1 dBi which would pretty much tie in with the uh, um, antenna you see in the photo and um, we'll also look at a horizontal half wave dipole antenna as well which again isn't common antenna that most people will uh, use uh, with uh, 2 dBi of gain so let's start off with the omnidirectional then so just to explain these tables, you've got your frequencies, your bands across the top. So we're going from 80 meters up to 10 meters. So the HF bands and uh, transmitter power there. And this is your, these are your distances of how close they deem it to be safe to get to the antenna. Uh, that's in meters. So you've got two measurements here. Um, you've got controlled and uncontrolled. Now, controlled is for people who know they're being exposed to an RF field. So, for example, uh, communications workers, I guess, as uh, radio hams, we might be uh, classed as controlled because we know we're being exposed to it. Um, uncontrolled is for uh, members of the public who have no control and might not even know they're being exposed to it. So, uh, let's uh, look at uh, my case scenario. 
uh, 80 meters now I was only transmitting 10 watts there um, this is talking about 100 watts and it's saying that apparently under controlled conditions I can get within 20 centimeters of that antenna was transmitting or members of the public uncontrolled uh, 40 centimeters um, so just under half a meter um, <laughs> I'm not sure I'd fancy getting that close to that antenna was transmitting now you also have to remember that um, SSB isn't full duty cycle so uh, if this would be something like a data signal full duty cycle SSB uh, is it 75% duty cycle for SSB I can't remember so actually theoretically you could get even closer um, <coughs> I'm uh, sorry excuse me <coughs> I'm not sure I'd uh, I'd fancy getting that cloak but you can see as the power increases that becomes more so at 1500 watts which um, I believe is the limit in the US uh, 1.6 meters at our legal limit we're 400 watts in the UK uh, so okay 500 watts um, close to our legal limit uh, just under a meter so and you can see as you go up in frequency the further away from it you have to be and um, if we look specifically at a dipole so move down to this table here for a dipole um, you go from let's use uncontrolled the more conservative uh, uh, distances so uncontrolled here 100 watts on a half wave dipole you should shouldn't get within uh, half a meter of it at uh, 80 meters again I'm not sure I like that idea but if you go up to um, if we increase the frequency up to 10 meters suddenly that goes up to 3.7 meters so ideal height for a dipole they say is a half wave above the ground so you get up to a thousand watts you probably don't want to be walking underneath that uh, dipole or even at 100 watts for that matter so uh, there you go that gives you a rough idea now one more point I wanted to look at if we go on to VHF so this is a quarter wave plane or mobile whip at 146 megahertz gain 1 dBi so your typical mobile mag mount and say a lot of people run 50 watts into that now if you're out in a public place doing something like uh, a rainer event for example public service communications you're parked up in the car park how many of us put a barrier around our car to ensure that people aren't going to walk within uh, two and a half meters of our car um because that is the limit or how close they say the general population so the general public should be getting to that antenna or worse go up to uhf you're looking at almost three meters there just under how many of us put a three meter exclusion zone around our car so this shows best practice um, there's another uh, website you can see here hintlink.com and you can put your uh, figures in there and actually let's do this for my example now we know from looking at the previous uh, tables that uh, um, what I did was uh, safe allegedly um, but uh, let's put in the example in the photo here so 10 watts uh, gain we'll take it from that chart was about uh, 1 dB let's be a bit more conservative go 2 dB it was uh, vertical isn't going to be anywhere near that much but uh, let's go worst case scenario and distance from the center of the antenna in feet now let's estimate I was about one meter which is what's well, one meter about one and a half meters is four feet isn't it so let's uh, 
let's say, I don't know, let's say I was uh, three feet away from it. And uh, frequency was roughly about 3.7 megahertz. So, and do we want to include effects of ground reflections? I guess so, might as well. So let's uh, calculate that. It brings up this table, so it shows us what we've entered. Estimated power density, and it says that it was safe. So for the person that uh, questioned it, I was in absolutely no danger whatsoever. But it, like I say, it's a, it's a fair point. Now, one final piece of information before I close up this video, I want to show you this RSGB website. Again, for all these uh, references I'm showing you, I will put the uh, links down in the uh, description. But uh, on this uh, page on safety in the shack, and uh, right down the bottom here, um, it goes on a little bit about what is uh, safe, and basically reiterates what I've just said. Um, the bit I want to highlight is uh, this bit here where it says, if you read nothing else, there is a rule of thumb. If you use a dipole and 400 watts, take the frequency in megahertz and use that spacing in feet. So, um, in other words, uh, well, it gives you an example here. On 14 megahertz, a spacing of 14 feet is required. Um, if you're at 400 watts, and it gives you a bit of a rule of thumb for uh, if you're using a beam. Um, so basically, as I said, and it says here, as you can see, the higher you go in frequency, the further you must be away from the transmitting antennas. So there you go. That's uh, just a quick, I guess, bit of guidance more for the uh, newly licensed M7s coming coming in, and even some of us, uh, you know, some of us who have been around ham radio for a lot longer, it's just to give us an idea of what's safe and. I show you the documentation there for what they say in theory is safe. Um, I mean, in the photo here, 10 watts, I've not really got any worries for being that close. But uh, um, with, if I was running 100 watts, theoretically, according to the documentation that's safe, um, I'm not sure I'd like to be standing that close if I was... Uh, pumping 100 watts into that and yeah interestingly I mean you can argue with uh, actually it's a thought that's just come to my head if we go back to uh, uh, where is it I need um, that PDF document hold on there we go so if I go uh, back to here I'm just uh, interested if you're using uh, handheld so I mean it doesn't go down as low as 5 watts but it's saying at 10 watts you should be half a meter away from the antenna at 10 watts um, in fact if I go to the calculator go back I just want to try so say you're running a handheld at 5 watts and um, Antenna gain, what's that going to be? Let, let's call it a uh, one dBi. It's probably not going to be quite that much. Um, mobile whips tend to be quite um, quite lossy. And how far away are you holding a handheld away from your face? Probably, uh, I don't know, about uh, 30 centimetres. And let's go for, I don't know, let's say you're on a repeater. Uh, let's just go somewhere in the middle of the uh, UHF band. So, I don't know, four, four, three, five, just a random frequency in the uh, UHF band. Because uh, 430 to 440 is our allocation in the UK. So we'll take slap bang in the middle, 435. Is that safe? Okay, yeah. I've... I've questioned that in the past, but uh, according to this, it is safe. So, 
I don't know, for short periods maybe, but I would say that it's probably always good pro, uh, good practice to have an external mic for uh, handheld and or uh, even the external antenna, get the antenna away from you. But there you go, that's, that's just my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think in the comments below.